Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Who touched my clothes? Jesus asked. Someone in the crowd reached out to Jesus and touched him, and Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it, the Bible says. He wanted to know who did that, who touched my clothes. The woman who came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak and had been miraculously healed by that touch, she heard that question of Jesus, who touched my clothes? And she did a very sensible, courageous, and godly thing. Trembling with fear, the Bible says, she told Jesus the whole truth. That seems like the sensible, courageous, and godly thing to do. In faith, she told Jesus the whole truth. She didn't slip away in silence. She didn't tell him a lie. That's the language of the devil. She didn't tell him a half-truth meant to deceive. She did the sensible, courageous, and godly thing. In faith, she told Jesus the whole truth. What do you suppose she said to him? My Lord, I've been subject to bleeding for 12 years. I've suffered much under the care of many doctors. I've spent all my money seeking a cure, and yet instead of getting better, I've only gotten worse. I heard about you, your compassion, your love, your miracles of healing for the blind, the mute, the palsied, the lame, the lepers, how you gave them health and strength and speech and sight. So, in faith and with hopeful expectation, I sought you out to touch you and be healed. I know you are a busy man and your time is precious. I didn't want to slow you down in any way or be a burden to you. I only wanted to be healed by your mercy. So, in faith and with hopeful expectation, I only wanted to touch you and be healed. She told Jesus the whole truth, and good things followed. Jesus said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Christians today do well when they imitate this sensible, courageous, godly woman and tell God the whole truth. Lies and half-truths don't work with God. He's not fooled by us and it only, make thing, it only makes things worse. Hebrews chapter 4 puts it like this, Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and exposed before the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. Or 1 Samuel 16 puts the idea this way, The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Christians today do well when they imitate this sensible, courageous, and godly woman and tell God the whole truth. I believe that can be a healthy part of our self-examination as Lutherans. I believe that can be a healthy part of our prayer life as Lutherans. Take some time to sort out all your thoughts and all your emotions about all the things going on in your life, and then in faith and with hopeful expectation, tell God the whole truth. In faith and hopeful expectation, tell God the whole truth about your sin, your guilt, your fears, your doubts, your laments, your temptations, your struggles. Tell him about your hopes, your godly desires, your godly expectation. Tell him about the thanks you have for him and the praise you want to offer him. Once we tell God the whole truth, expect good things to follow. Expect God to respond generously, in a way and in a time and in a place of his choosing. You know, that too is an important idea. Expect him to respond generously, in a way and in a time and in a place of his choosing. And don't underestimate the love of God and the might of God, who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. 
That's Ephesians chapter 3. Once we tell God the whole truth, expect good things to follow. Expect Him to respond generously in a way and in a time and in a place of His choosing. Don't underestimate the love of God or the might of God. Don't underestimate the love of God and the might of God. That's one of the things that we are reminded of by Jesus' second miracle in today's Gospel reading, where Jesus raised a 12-year-old girl from the dead. Jairus' daughter was dead. And when Jesus said, the child is not dead but asleep, he means that her death was only temporary. He's going to fill her cold, dead body with life again. You know, one of the ways the Bible uses the word sleep is like this. Sleep means dead only for a while because God knows how to raise the dead. And that's the way Jesus is using that word when he says, the child is not dead, but asleep. He means that her death is only temporary. He's going to fill her cold, dead body with life again. Don't underestimate the love of God and the might of God. And the people at Jairus' house who laughed at Jesus, I believe that's what they were doing, underestimating the power of God, thinking that the child is dead and nothing can be done about it. So, once we tell God the whole truth, expect good things to follow. Expect Him to respond generously in a way and in a time and in a place of His choosing. Don't underestimate the love of God and the might of God, who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to His power that is at work within us. I believe that's what Jesus was doing in the Garden of Gethsemane when He spoke to His Heavenly Father in prayer. In faith and hopeful expectation, He was pouring out His heart to His, to his Heavenly Father in prayer telling him the whole truth about what he was thinking and how he was feeling. He told, he, he told his disciples, <clears throat> Jesus did, he told his disciples who were with him there in the garden, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow. And then he turned to God in prayer and said, Abba, Father, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Jesus is pouring out his heart to God in prayer and expecting good things to follow. And the good things that followed that prayer are the death of Jesus on the cross as the payment for the sins of the world, for the joy set before him, he endured that cross. The other good thing that followed is his victory over the grave on Easter Sunday after a three-day sleep in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. On the cross, Jesus suffered our guilt in our place as our substitute, enduring the wrath of God that our sins deserve. Every time we've been silent before God when we should have spoken up, every attempt to lie to God or tell Him a half-truth, all that and more is covered by the blood of Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And the resurrected Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords. And he will one day raise you from the dead as well. Don't underestimate the love of God and the might of God. Death for you, his church, the baptized, is like sleep, only temporary. In faith and with hopeful expectation, the church is right to baptize at God's command, never underestimating the love of God and the power of God, as he works in the waters of holy baptism. In faith and with hopeful expectation, the church is right to confess our sins and receive absolution at Jesus' invitation, never underestimating the love and the power of God. In faith and with hopeful expectation, the church is right to touch our Savior, who hides himself in bread and wine. Don't underestimate the love of God and the might of God. Touch, take, eat, drink, be healed as you receive forgiveness, life, and salvation. In faith and with hopeful expectation, the church is right to proclaim to the nations Christ crucified, 
never underestimating the love of God and the power of God as the Holy Spirit joyfully works faith in those who hear when and where it pleases Him. O sons and daughters of the King, in faith tell God the whole truth and expect good things to follow, good things that will last for eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.